Welcome to Power World, a game that I've been hyped for since it was first announced. When a friend of mine first showed me it, I just thought it was a complete troll and would just be funny to play with friends. But now it's released, I've seen the game's current player count hit way over 1 million. I purchased the game on release and unknowingly earned every achievement in the first 24 hours. Power World is in early access, so I'm sure they'll add loads more achievements in the future too, especially if it comes to PlayStation. From my experience, Power World is extremely similar to the Ark games. The Pokemon catching and collecting is obviously in place, and surprisingly, there's a lot of things that they've taken from Elden Ring, such as certain boss areas, environments, and one of the pals has riding mechanics exactly the same as Torrent. As of now, there are only 10 achievements, but they do take some time, especially if you're just playing casually and not using multipliers, or playing in co-op. I used some multipliers for the purpose of this video, but even with those, some of the endgame bosses are still pretty tough to beat if you haven't put in the grind for the best gear. I needed to catch 90 different kinds of POW, and there are 111 unique POWs in total, so this is quite a grind. Noting that you need to upgrade your base's production facilities a lot because the spheres used for catching POWs come in many different tiers, you'll need the best tiers to catch some high level and rare pals. For example, if you're using the starter sphere on a level 40 plus pal, it will literally say 0.00% chance to catch. But breeding is also a good option to work around this if you want to focus on farming and breeding instead of manufacturing and catching. And at the other end of the achievement spectrum, I needed to defeat five bosses. You enter towers and each tower presents you with a character riding their strongest pal and facing you in an arena. One of the bosses is fairly easy because she's part of the tutorial, but the other four can be really challenging and I needed to more or less have a fully upgraded base to craft the gear needed to defeat them. Rightio, let's get into the video shall we? I started off creating my character and was then thrown into the world. The introduction is nice and quick, it looks like we've been shipwrecked and the only clue you're given is on a strange tablet that reads, the towers are the key, the tree holds the truth. The towers refer to the boss towers, but the tree holding the truth I honestly don't know yet. There's basically a giant urge tree on the map, you know, just like Elden Ring, but I never went over there because it looked like it was outside of the map, but I'm not sure yet. So I tested out the controls, strolled forward a bit and encountered my first fast travel point. There are loads of these scattered around the world and you can also fast travel to your bases, which is super handy throughout the game. If you've played Ark, you will almost instantly recognize the similarities in the inventory here. And Power World even has the same technology page to purchase new buildings, items and such each time you level up. It's not a bad thing though, Ark is amazing. I chose the recipe for Pal Spheres first and then ran straight to a tree to punch it for wood. You even get fibre from trees, just like Ark once again. Oh, it's just Ark. It's just Ark. I love Oh, it's so good. Things got a little bit darker when I crafted myself a wooden club to start beating up pals with. Then my first goal was to get a base set up and functional with some captured pals. I had to make myself some pal spheres first though, so I could start getting some workers. This shiny rock was made out of powdium, which is the core ingredient of pal spheres. It's also extremely useful throughout the game, even being used to craft the current top tier of armor. I gathered the resources needed for my base and some pal spheres to try and collect my first pal, and it didn't go so well at first. Okay, now I can throw a pal sphere. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Did I just, so is, is that gone now? Yeah, just okay, double checking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Once they're knocked out, that's it. it, it basically dead okay <laughs> good to know good to know so i found out the hard way that the pals actually die and it was now time to beat them within an inch of their lives so i remade the spheres i'd wasted and finally caught my first pal in power world for my first achievement and catch wow that's cool that is smooth hey beginning of the legend caught my first pal and i leveled up from that do i catch another of the same one nah let's make him fight Get him! Okay, that. Uh. Never mind. <laughs> what? What? Is that? It's a meat shield! I mean, that's. That's amazing, though, to be fair. <laughs> Come back. Lambo, return! Uh, let's catch some Pokemon, I mean pals. <laughs> I experienced my first night in the world and certain pals only appear at this time. I encountered this daydream and this was the first proper encounter where I had to fight alongside my pals and dodge attacks. It was awesome. Open it up. Hey oh no. Chickpea, return. <laughs> Go. Cativa. Oh, whoops. Oh, that was close. Oh, 83%. Come on. Come on! Oh, it does the thing! Come on! Yes! 
Ah, oh, I got it. Before exploring and catching new pals, I had to build my base up a bit. So I caught some more land balls and set them to work. It was really wholesome having them build my bed for me. And then we made all the pal beds and I cooked everyone dinner before bedtime. I built some farms so that the pals could feed themselves and run the base on their own. I also built a statue of Anubis, which I could use to upgrade my catching chance and upgrade my pals stats. I was all ready to head out now. I just had to leave them some food whilst their crops grew. Give them some food. <laughs> Cannibalism. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's so wrong, but it's funny. Why not? I crafted a glider and left the base in style and encountered a few new types of pals, including a water slash ice type and a fire type. Although my favorite out of this bunch was a pal that I could later ride on when I spent tech points on its saddle, which led me to getting the achievement for catching 10 unique pals. Boom. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. Oh, caught 10 kinds of pals as well. Oh, very nice, very nice. Whew, that was intense. You could guess what the first thing I did was when I went back to the base with my new catch. Oh yeah. Oh my God, this is awesome. Any double jump, it's just like the mount in Elden Ring. <laughs> wow. GG. With a fast means of transport in my clutches, it was time to venture out of my little base of operations and go catch crazy because I still needed a whopping 80 more pals to get all of those achievements. I stumbled across a settlement which had a fast travel point and multiple merchants, one for resources and unique hat schematics, and the other sold random pals, so it's best to check these guys regularly during the early and mid game. I was finding so many new types of pal as I ventured off to different regions. It's always so exciting finding new monsters to catch for the first time in catch and collect kind of games. I was reaching 20 unique catches very quickly. Boom. Thank you. Nice. Oh, 20 kinds of pals as well. Awesome. Later on, I found my first large flying pal. I managed to catch it and was so excited to stick a saddle on this thing and take it to the skies. Right next to it was also the first dungeon I'd seen, and I was going to come back to it later when I was more prepared. Dungeons contain unique pals and rare resources, so always go to ones that are your level. I made my way home and crafted some new nifty metal tools, expanded the farmland to plant wheat and make flour, which in turn leads to making cake, which is needed for breeding. Then I made some big progress by creating the first thing that made the game really feel like what I'd seen in the trailers. Uh, a weapons workbench. Oh my god. See, like a pan gun straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's just so weird, but amazing. Uh, okay, here we go. Weapon workbench crafted. <laughs> Look at it. Just what the hell? After my break back home, I finally went back to that dungeon. There's lots of loot to be found in there and always a boss at the end. These boss pals are called alphas. You can catch them too, and their stats are considerably higher than normal versions, and they're physically bigger as well, which is really cool. The loot at the end of dungeons can be really good. You can get accessories that give you buffs, such as defense boosts or resistances to the heat and cold. The best things are the rare schematics though, which let you create weapons and gear that are a higher rarity than the basic stuff you craft at your base. I finally made the saddle for my big bird and then made my way to the first tower of the game. Once again, this first boss fight is the end of the tutorial. They're way harder later on and require some serious material grinding and base building. Each character in the towers have their own really cool introduction cutscenes. It really feels like gym leaders in Pokemon. The first tower is guarded by Zoe and Grizzbolt and they were in the way of me getting my first tower related achievement. Turn. Yeah. I don't know if that's an exploit, but <laughs> that works really well. Oh, he's stuck on the pillar now. GG. I'm out of stamina. Should I just... There we go. <laughs> Boss eliminated. Defeat Zoe and Grisbolt. Boss first kill. Five ancient technology points as well. Is she dead? Oh my god, she's actually dead. What the... <laughs> what? Nah, surely not. Okay, that's... That's pretty messed up, but kind of hilarious. With the tutorial out of the way, I could just do whatever I wanted, and I chose to catch more pals first. Slowly creeping up on that big 90 unique pals achievement. Nice. Oh, and that was my 50th pal. Whew. Just quickly sneak that capture in whilst uh, get destroyed by everyone. Why didn't you guys go for the freaking syndicate people? Leave me alone. Whilst hunting down alphas, I came across a far too familiar sight. Inside this dungeon was such a cool looking pal though. <laughs> Sealed around with the Swordmaster. That is sick, but that 
<laughs> it's just Elden Ring. The churches look like the Elden Ring churches. These look exactly like whatever though these things are called in Elden Ring, where you just it's a boss in there. Oh, so cool! Freaking samurai pal. Well, I was definitely going to catch this guy. A great addition to the base as well, because Bushy can do handiwork and also light my furnace. A nice combo. And whilst chilling in the base, I had the most peculiar raid warning show up, which I only ever had once. Wait, what? Raid fangos? <laughs> saying that love. What the hell? Are you serious? Right. It's time to test out my new handgun. Where are they coming from? Over there. What the hell? Oh, I say, uh... Type of power. Catch. Oh my god. Jesus. I treated my pals to a hot springs to reduce their stress levels, then geared up some more to take on the next tower leaders. I tested my newfound power against a Mamores, and it did not go to plan. I then spent the rest of my time finding the remaining towers in each region. Most of the towers were in extreme condition areas too, so I needed to craft armor that had heat or cold resistance. And once I arrived at the towers, these guys were no pushovers. So I couldn't beat the PIDF tower in the desert. Then I tried the Eternal Pyre tower at the volcano and got destroyed there too. I found the Free Power Alliance tower slightly closer to home and this was my best chance of beating another tower for an achievement. And here I was battling against Lily and Lilene. But for this fight, I had crafted myself the pump action shotgun. Ah, ah. Oh my god. Okay. This is strong. Oh. Bam. Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna win this. I'm actually gonna win this. Whoa! Van Worm just annihilated her. Yes! <laughs> Yes! Defeat Lily and Lilene. Oh. Okay. I'm glad I found her. She's she's obviously the second boss. The other guys were had way more health. Yes! Finally! I'm actually strong. After gaining some more levels and manufacturing loads more shotgun shells, I went back to the towers in order of their hit points, so I knew who I could and couldn't beat at this time. But having the best shotgun in the game is definitely a good sign. Now to take down Marcus and Phalaris. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, King Packer. Oh, he's dead though. <laughs> I'm gonna get closer. There you go. When the damage is white, I think I'm super close. Oh my god. Oh, that freaking crit. No way. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. Oh, Marcus and Valeris defeated. I then attempted to take down Victor and his Shadow Beak, but he proved to be way too strong. I found out he was level 50, so I needed to level up some more. This was a good opportunity though, to grind materials, build up my base and craft loads of ammunition. Then I decided I might as well go for the 90 power achievement, because catching powers is a really good way to farm XP, as long as they aren't the powers you immediately see when you spawn, like land balls, you get loads of XP for catching them. I had also now farmed and crafted the second best spears in the game, which made catching lots of these alphas a doddle. Whilst on my hunt for new pals, I came across one of the poster pals for the game, Anubis. It was already a level 47 out of 50 and had a super low capture rate. Challenge accepted. Wow. Still 2%. What a chance here. Oh my god. No way. No freaking way! Oh, and that was my 90th! Wow, he's got to be like one of the rarest in the game as well. Oh my god, that chance. That low, low chance. Wow. That completely overtook the excitement of the achievement. But yes, that's the last achievement to do with catching different kinds of pals for now. Oh, until they bring out more achievements, more powers and stuff. But yeah, 90 different kinds. Let's look at the power deck. 90 registered, 109 encounters. There's a few more. So there's 111 powers. I've got 90 of them. Pretty cool. I immediately put Anubis in my team as he was already stronger than some of my boosted pals, even though Anubis wasn't level 50 yet. Then I boosted his stats and after stocking up on ammo again, went to the next tower containing Axel and Orzerk. 
Oh, yeah, I've got my new shield as well. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, easy. Get that arm oh, level 50. Look at that. Oh, the damage. Before, I was hitting like 200 crits. Bam. See you later, mate. Oh, ho, ho. boss eliminated. Volcano Sovereign defeated Axel and Orzerk. Yes, one more to go. The toughest one to go. The toughest in question being Victor and Shadowbeak again. Clearly the hardest boss in the game. But I now had the best power metal armor and a giga shield, so I should be fine. Unless I run out of ammo because my melee weapons weren't upgraded at all. Okay, yeah, the 200 crits. Uh, so I thought it was the level, but no, it's just him. He's just, oh my god. My yeah. dude's dead already. <sighs> what? Okay, he just one-shot chill it. Okay, a new go. Whoa. Oh no, this is this not. Whoa, five k damage from Anubis. Okay, okay, it's strong. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, so far so good anyway. What the hell? Oh. Wait, the, fr the freaking Bella. The worst thing is, if I do lose this, I have to grind all my ammo back for maybe an hour. Oh, there you are. And this armor is so good. I think that's what saved me. Oh no. Headshot, come on. Hey. Oh. God, it just hits me through the pillar, of course. In the face, in the face, come on. I'm getting low on ammo. I think I've got this, I think I've got this. <laughs> I didn't want to say it for so long, but. This is fine, this is fine. There we go. Oh, ho, ho, boss eliminated. That was all right. Defeat Victor and Shadow Beak, Astral Sovereign. Oh, you know what? That armor is so OP. And that's 10 out of 10 achievements on Power World. <laughs> I hope they add more. And uh, if it comes to PlayStation, I'll probably do the Platinum. Considering there are nearly 800,000 people in game right now on Power World, the top 2% is pretty good. That uh, final achievement is a 2.2%. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed my Power World achievement journey and a massive thanks to the NC Collective. See you in the next one.